there were certain people you just looked up to. And you said, there goes somebody who really knows how to get things done, who has a great spirit, a great soul, a great intelligence about the work of, of uh, justice reform, of helping people in uh, dire circumstances. And she had created, with help, Wildcat. And Wildcat was this paradigm of, of a successful demonstration project. So in the Vera world, it was Amy, it was Wildcat. We felt that uh, there was an opportunity to put people to work most many people had written off. Wildcat was started by a group of businessmen who were hiring ex-offenders to work in their companies. People respected Amy's judgment, her standing in the world. She was a civic leader of the First Order. She loved this city. But she also had a particular place in her heart for those who were less fortunate, and a particular place for those who were the beneficiaries of Wildcat. Wildcat believes that people are very redeemable if given a chance. And Wildcat gives them that chance. Herb Sturz has been a mentor of Jeremy's. He's had a very big impact on Jeremy's uh, activities and the way he approaches things. I think, and I think everyone thinks of reentry and Jeremy together. 1999, I was working for Janet Reno. She was the Attorney General and said to me and my colleague, what are we doing about all the people coming out of prison. My honest answer that I gave her was, uh, Miss Reno, I don't know. And she said to me, with that look in my eyes that only Janet Reno can give, she said, get back to me with a better answer. Each year, approximately 650,000 prisoners are released from jail. Unfortunately, an estimated two-thirds of them are rearrested within three years. So that question and those initial inquiries started me on a journey. High recidivism rate places a huge financial burden on taxpayers, and it deprives families of their daughters and sons and husbands and wives and moms and dads. It doesn't make sense from a social justice point of view. It doesn't make any sense from a, a uh, economic uh, point of view. He really kind of created that field in a way that we're all indebted to him. He's probably done a combination of more scholarly work as well as advocacy focused on the individual, how a he or she coming out of prison can have a life. He wrote a book that really, I think, outlined for all of us the depth of the reentry issue and sort of what needs to be done. It's just very gratifying to see all the interest being paid to those people coming out of prison and you know, the Second Chance Act. Bill, I'm signing today the Second Chance Act of 2007 will build on work to help prisoners reclaim their lives. Money flowing that had been available before, new programs, new research. And that continues to sort of carry his mark. And Jeremy in his position as president of John Jay College is particularly well situated to uh, have his thoughts, his advocacy listened to. I believe that he was born to become president of John Jay. Jeremy is an exceptional leader. John Jay has this wonderful uh, tagline, educating for justice. We educate for a purpose. We educate because we want to improve the world. We call ourselves fierce advocates for justice. I just really think we have someone who has had wonderful experience working in city government, uh, working in law enforcement, working at the federal level, with a true commitment to scholarship and to a very student-centered environment. I think he has mentored hundreds, if not thousands, of people. If you look at Jeremy's career, Holistically, the theme is pretty clear. Social justice, uh, freedom with responsibility, and a sense of optimism that things can always be made better. That's quite a legacy for Jeremy to have. When Janet Reno came to John Jay after I was here, and my book had just come out, uh, and I said to her over lunch, I said, Miss Reno, you asked me a question uh, five years ago. I didn't have a good answer then. Here's a better answer. So I gave her but they all come back. <laughs>